Okay, so this question, very fucking high yield for the US simile, including this image here. US simile wants you to know this slide, okay? You say, Michael, no idea what I'm looking at. That's okay. I describe this as a motley mix or a soup. This is CML, okay? You can see different, different sizes, different shapes of cells, uh, just a motley mix. This is CML. We look at the vignette here. The descriptors are not so critical. There's weight loss, there's splenomegaly. Okay, nonspecific miscellaneous findings. They could say lymphadenopathy, it doesn't really matter. The giveaway is this breakdown of cells. Even without this image, you can pretty much ascertain easily that this is CML. Okay, you don't even need the image. This is an easy question. Now I'm going to talk about why this breakdown is CML. First things first. This hematocrit's normal. Uh, women, we expect 42% plus or minus 5 uh, if they're uh, menstruating, okay? So she doesn't have anemia. We look at the white blood cell count. Normal is four to 11,000. Now, I would say for NBMEs for step one and step two, two-thirds of your leukemia questions are going to give you a white blood cell count. 50,000 or, or greater, okay? If you get a if you get a white blood cell count that's fifty thousand or higher, it pretty much clinches leukemia. So it's only when you're under fifty thousand that it becomes ooh wow like a little bit more challenging. But I mean twenty four thousand is still fucking high, including the fact that we have this breakdown as I'll describe in a second and this image. So it's still CML. But the point is I've seen CML questions where the white blood cell count is as high as two hundred thousand. I'm not joking. Okay, and I've also seen it as low. That's 14,500 for a CML question. Now, most of the time when you have a white blood cell count in the teens and the 20s, it's just a simple infection, okay? So if you had a pneumonia, let's just say a regular strep pneumo or mycoplasma pneumonia, you could have a white blood cell count that's 13,000, okay, or 18,000. Uh, if you have sepsis, the ruptured appendix, I've seen NBME question where it's 24,500, okay? Um, pretty fucking rare to have an infection where your, white blood, where your white blood cell count is in the 30s or 40s thousand. It's usually Bordetella pertussis, whooping cough, and it's all lymphocytes. It looks like ALL or CLL, okay? That's really hard and that will fuck people up. I don't want to digress too much. But if they give you a kid with whooping cough and you see the white blood cell count is 40,000, it's all lymphocytes, you're like, what the fuck? You're like, is this ALL? No, it is whooping cough. Um, and of course, they can give you whooping cough in like a 19-year-old, and that's not going to be ALL. You could think, is this CLL? No, it's whooping cough. As I said, don't want to digress. My point being is infections are generally the teens or the 20s thousand. Bordetella pertussis can be 30s or 40s. But if you're higher than that, you're definitely leukemia on USMLE. Now this one, 24,000. So you're, you're down in the territory of uh, infections, severe infections. But the rest of the vignette gives it away for leukemia, let alone the fact all of our answer choices here are leukemias. So now we look at the white blood cell breakdown. Now, literally myelogenous leukemia, okay? Uh, CML. Okay, or AML. When we look at the myelogenous ones, we expect cell types that are of myeloid progenitors, okay? So, or myeloid lineage. So, CML is going to be your diagnosis when the vignette says myelocytes or metamyelocytes or promyelocytes. That's CML. AML, in contrast, they're not going to say myelocytes, metamyelocytes, or promyelocytes, they're going to tell you just blasts, okay? They'll tell you blasts are 20%, and you'll say, okay, blasts, they're immature cells of myeloid lineage, and they're not going to show you this smear. They're going to show you our rods, okay? So the, the slight bluish color, uh, myeloperoxidase rods, okay? They're myeloperoxidase of blue-green heme-containing pigment. That's your smear for AML. They're going to say blasts. Whereas CML, they're going to say myelocytes, promyelocytes, metamyelocytes. Now you say, what about the neutrophils 50%? Does that mean anything? Normally, our neutrophil count 
our neutrophil percentage should be 50 to 55%. Uh, I've seen infections, bacterial infections, where it's like 60, 65. So generally 50, 55, that's our normal uh, neutrophil percentage anyway. But if you think about it, because our white blood cell count is really fucking high, you can say, well, that's like, that's a lot of neutrophils though. And neutrophils are of myeloid uh, lineage. So neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, and then all of these my- all of these cell types that sound weird to have myelo, these are all uh, myeloid lineage, okay? So this is CML. Now, I could literally give a 90-minute presentation on this, discuss all sorts of things. But one thing I want to point out, leukamoid reaction, that's another weird-sounding term. Leukamoid reaction means you have a high leukocyte count, usually caused by infection. And it's not leukemia. Okay, I've made other audio cubing questions on leukemoid reaction. You're going to see a smear where they show you just neutrophils, so neutrophilia. So they might tell you someone has a UTI, a girl has a UTI. They show you neutrophils on a smear. And then they tell you that there's promyelocytes, metamyelocytes, uh, just myelocytes. You're like, what the fuck? You're like, I thought that was CML. I've seen it for leukemoid reaction on USMLE questions. But as I said, you'll be able to differentiate because the smear will be neutrophils for a leukemoid reaction, whereas it's going to be this motley mix for CML. Also worth, worth, worthy of note that if they mention something called leukocyte ALP, leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, it's increased in leukemoid reaction, it's decreased in CML. It's just a marker within uh, leukocytes. But my point of consolidation here is if you see metamyelocytes, myelocytes, promyelocytes, on a breakdown in the question, I would say nine out of 10 questions in USMLE, it's gonna be CML. One out of 10, it's leukemoid reaction, okay? Now, I mentioned before, most of the time, leukemia is gonna give you uh, a high leuk- a high leukocyte count, 50s or 50,000 or greater. I've seen white blood cell count as low as 3,000, 3,500 uh, for leukemia, okay? I've seen a uh, hairy cell leukemia at 3,500. And I'd also Googled it a bit. For whatever reason, hairy cell leukemia, where you have cytoplasmic projections from the cell, uh, and they'll show you an image of that. It'll be an easy question, but the leukocyte count can be pretty low for hairy cell leukemia for some reason. And another thing is I saw a very, very, very difficult, difficult ALL question. So ALL is always going to be the answer in pediatrics when you have a high lymphocyte count. As I said, don't confuse it with Bordetella pertussis. Um, but I saw one ALL question where it was the leukocyte count was about 3,000. And you're like, hmm, couldn't that be like aplastic anemia? Like they had low white blood cells, low RBCs, low platelets. It looked like aplastic anemia, maybe from like parvo. But they had told you that the, the kid had like a month or two of lymphadenopathy. It was actually ALL. And if you Google it, they'll talk about how leukemia is like, a uh, more minor percentage of the time can actually have low or normal leukocyte counts. But I just really want you to, I think that the key point I want you to take away is when you get, in terms of leukocyte counts, when you get a question you assimilate, if you see anything 50,000 or greater, it's fucking leukemia, okay? And then 20s or 30s will generally be infection. Uh, whooping cough will be 30s to 40s, all lymphocytes. And then more difficult questions will give you for leukemia will give you uh, lower numbers, but they'll usually give you, uh, give you uh, zingers, such as just this, this slide here that, that uh, give away the diagnosis. So now I'm just going to quickly run through some of the high yield points about these uh, diagnoses here. Because as I said before, I could talk for 90 minutes. ALL, that's going to be the diagnosis in pediatrics, almost always B cell, greater than 80% of the time. If they want T cell ALL, They'll give you a thymic lesion, which can present with a Pembertin sign, which is flushing of the face when you stick your arms above the head. They don't even have to mention the arms above the head. They can just say the kid is flushing the face. It's a thymic lesion that's, that's tall, T-cell, ALO, but it's usually B-cell, okay? And uh, ALO, you can have CD10 positive cells and TDT positivity, but ALL is going to be your diagnosis in pediatrics, and you're going to have a, leuco- a leukocyte count, let's say, of 80,000, 80, so 80,000, and they'll say 86% or 90% are lymphocytes. That's how most of your ALL questions are going to present. AML, 
once again, that's going to be our rods on a smear, and they're going to say that there's blasts. All right, and uh, APL is merely a, a subtype of AML. So you say, but if you were seeing the answer choices, you, you could. Some students would say, but isn't APL just a type of AML? Well, yeah, but they're both fucking wrong. So that there you go. So APL is AML type M3. Okay, so these are both AML, uh, but AML in general, you just need to be, be aware of the hour rods. APL is a subtype that has a 1517 translocation. It's notably responsive to all trans retinoic acid, vitamin A, okay? And when you lyse the leukemic cells, you can get uh, tumor lysis syndrome. They want you to know you give xanthine oxidase inhibitors uh, to prevent tumor lysis syndrome. And the hour rods being released into the blood can precipitate a DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, okay? Now, CLL, that's going to be super high lymphocytes, uh, similar to ALL in that you're, except uh, CLL is not pediatrics, all right? So CLL, they're going to tell you, uh, let's say a 60-year-old male has super high leukocyte count, 90% are lymphocytes, and they can tell you that the cells are CD5 or 23 positive, and the smear will be uh, smudge cells, okay? So they're fragile cells, uh, fragile uh, lymphocytes that fragment on the light microscopy. CML, once again, this is our fucking image. Philadelphia chromosome, 922 translocation, BCR able. It's an, it's an oncogenic product. Okay, so an oncogenic tyrosine kinase. Treat with imatinib, uh, and that can cause fluid retention. So uh, peripheral edema. Okay, so lots we can chat about. I think this recording in and of itself was actually pretty long, but uh, I definitely, if you were able to get through it, I nailed out some of the high yield points for you. That's it.